Ian from In 30 Minutes Guides. Today I'm going to be talking about 529 paperwork for 529 college savings plans. If this video helps, please take a moment to like it and follow me. Let's get started. I've done a whole bunch of videos on 529 plans and how they work and the six reasons why people should use them. I haven't really gotten into the, you know, the nuts and bolts of actually using the plans to pay for qualified educational expenses. And actually, it doesn't need to be that hard. So just so you know, if you're opening a 529 plan through Fidelity or through Vanguard, they will generate some paperwork for you. Uh, you don't really need, I mean, you should give that to your accountant, absolutely. And when you're filling out your taxes, you should use those documents, not only from the, these, uh, these companies, but also from the, ed, from the educational institution when they give you paperwork related to the expenses. But the most important thing to keep in mind is the number, the number that you need to keep track of for your, um, for your, for your child's expenses are the cost of attendance and then what what I do for the for like a 529 plan, say I'm making withdrawal to pay for my child's uh, college expenses, the way that I have my account set up, my 529 plan set up, I'll basically tell Fidelity or Vanguard or whoever to, to transfer money from the 529 plan to my connected bank account. And then I'll write a check or I'll pay money out of that bank account to cover the tuition costs. So for instance, for the uh, University of Massachusetts at Boston, uh, this year there'll be a, you know, a, tu a tuition cost of $14,542. So when I write the check for that, basically what I'll do right before I write the check is I'll withdraw the same amount from the 529 plan, stick it in my bank account, and then I'll turn right around and write the check for that. The other thing you can do, if because a lot of these costs, they're combined, you can just, you can just withdraw uh, you know, a larger amount of money up to this amount. So let's say that the child is living off campus and is a full-time student. So this is the maximum amount that I can withdraw. These are qualified educational expenses that I can withdraw from my 529 plan. And you know something like loan fees or personal miscellaneous, it's, it's, it, it, you don't have to be you know, totally hyper about getting into all the details of saving this receipt and saving that receipt. Certainly, you should you, you should have a paper trail that you can turn to later on to cover that stuff. So we're not paying any of our expenses in cash. We're paying by check. We're paying by credit card. And I know if we ever get audited, I can turn around and look at my bank account statement. I can look at the checks that I've written. I can look at my credit card statement. And yes, if there is a a, a fee to University of Massachusetts for four hundred fifty dollars for let's say you know, uh, some sort of qualified expense, like I don't know what it might be. It might be some sort of a, 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 an expense for using a certain facility at the school. Like that will be in the credit card that I can, I can go back to that later on if we ever get audited and point to that. But the main number I'm keeping an eye on is this particular number. Um, I have to understand that I have to live within that number for the expenses. And this particularly comes out for something like, like housing. So living off campus, that's what the University of Massachusetts says that the living off campus cost should be over the nine month period. Practically speaking, the rent may be more than that. So it's not like if the rent is more than this number, that means it, um, if it's like, let's say, so this is $9,000 for nine months. So let's say that the rent is actually 20% more than that. That 20% more, I won't be able to use the 529 plan to pay for that. That's gonna be coming out of pocket. But important thing to know for the paperwork is for stuff like that, just make sure that you can you you can find the uh, the documentation or the paperwork that shows you paid this money for this particular ex expense, whether it's paying by Venmo, whether it's paying by check, whether it's paying by credit card, and like the uh, person who's receiving the money, whether it's the university, or the landlord, or you know the company where you buy the, your child's computer from, whatever it is, you're able to track that down. So if you do get audited, if the IRS does want to make sure that you're using this properly, you can turn around and you can say, hey. The university said it was this amount of money. This is the maximum. This is what we withdrew from our 529 plan. Uh, you can see the transfers here, and then you can see the uh, credit card costs or the Venmo costs or the checks that I wrote that cover all of these different types of fees. So hopefully that helps out. Hopefully that reassures you. Um, you know, it'd be nicer if there was a, a, an easier way to, to deal with it. But basically, I don't get too frantic about keeping track of every single detail at the time, just as long as I know that I can find this information for these particular costs down the road if I need to. And usually these days, thanks to electronic payments and uh, checks, you can easily track this stuff or 
you know, compile it later on if you need to do that for some reason. And then keep in mind that the companies themselves, they do, uh, they do track your withdrawals and your contributions to 529 plans. And finally, the universities will also issue some paperwork for certain types of costs. Like they will issue paperwork showing that, you know, uh, we paid money for this, the tuition cost and maybe for, maybe for how, uh, maybe for housing if they're living on campus, uh, but other costs will be, uh, the, the university won't track that. So you have to kind of be aware of that on your own. My name is Ian Lamont. I'm the founder of In 30 Minutes Guides. If you go to in30minutes.com, we have all kinds of books on all kinds of topics, all written by experts, personal finance, technology, uh, health topics, and social security, all kinds of things. So check it out at in30minutes.com. Thank you so much for watching.